Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So it has been a long while since the previous video and I have been a bit busy with my life with a few changes recently. So today's video is going to be part two about how to build your skincare routine. Now in the previous video, we did part one where I introduced what are the basic and most essential items you need in your skincare routine. So this one will be about the additional steps you can add to give your skin a little boost or to treat specific skin concerns or even just to feel nice and to treat yourself. These extra items include treatments, serums, toners, essences and other miscellaneous items like eye creams and also masks. So I will start with the most effective and helpful items and end off with items that are nice to use if you have the time and money for that. And of course, there will be product recommendations as well and I will link all the products in the description below with the links to where to get them and also how much they cost. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do subscribe for more skincare content and smash that like button. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So the first category is prescription treatments. For these type of treatments, you can only get them by prescription from a doctor. Now you don't have to go and see a dermatologist to get them. Sometimes you can just go to a GP to get these products. So there are many GPs that do carry uh, some of these prescription treatments that you can get. So I will just go into my experience with using prescription oral pills and also topical retinoids. Well, firstly, there's the retinoid family. Retinoids are a vitamin A derivative. They were primarily formulated to fight acne. But uh, after many studies have been done, it has been proven to help with hyperpigmentation, wrinkles and fine lines as well. So for prescription retinoids, there are oral pills and there are also creams that you can apply on top of your skin. So for oral pills that you can take, there is isotretinoin, otherwise known as roaccutane. So my experience with this was very pleasant. It was extremely effective in clearing up my acne and at the same time, it also gave me a brighter complexion. It also helped to fade away a lot of my post-acne hyperpigmentation. And uh, the only side effect I experienced was that my skin was just a little bit more sensitive to UV rays. And that was during a time when I spent a lot of time outdoors and had bad skincare habits. So during that time, I did develop some very tiny brown spots on my cheekbones which were very difficult to get rid of and I still do have some of them even though they are slowly beginning to fade away. So after I stopped using isotretinoin uh, by advice from the doctor, um, I experienced good skin for quite a while but in about a year, my acne came back. So that was when I went back to the doctor and asked for topical creams that I could try. So he recommended other types of topical creams from the retinoid family as well. So that was when I came into contact with adapalene. Okay, so for topical retinoids, there's tretinoin and there's also adapalene. These are prescription only, so definitely use them under advice from a doctor. And for me, I have used adapalene for years and it has been effective and wonderful to use. Both tretinoin and adapalene are active forms of retinoic acid, which means it doesn't have to go through any conversions in your skin before it becomes bioactive. And at the same time, tretinoin has been studied extensively uh, on the effects of skin and it has been proven to be effective for hyperpigmentation and wrinkles and reducing fine lines. At the same time, it also treats acne. Adapalene is a newer version of retinoid. There are some small studies that have shown its effectiveness in treating fine lines and wrinkles, although it is primarily used to treat acne. So adapalene is also much gentler and has fewer side effects and it can also work with other skincare actives as well. And that is why it is my preferred form of retinoid treatment. So my experience with adapalene was in the form of differing and uh, it has been very effective on my skin. So when I used adapalene, my skin was very clear it was bright and uh, I didn't have any hyperpigmentation issues. What I did when I used it was, I used it at night and I only used it every other day and I used it after a moisturizer. So in terms of its anti-aging benefits, 
I am still in my 20s, so I cannot really tell you for sure that it helps with anti-aging, but I can let you know in about 10 years' time. So although the retinoid family is excellent in giving your skin wonderful results in terms of brightening, anti-aging, and fighting acne, it does come with its side effects. There are some people who do experience a lot of peeling and irritation from using retinoids, especially in the first few weeks of use. And also, uh, retinoids are not safe for pregnancy. Therefore, the next active ingredient that I'm going to introduce is one that is traditionally recommended for those who have more sensitive skin or those who are pregnant or planning to conceive. So this is also known as azelaic acid. Azelaic acid can be available in prescription form and also off the counter. So in prescription form, azelaic acid is uh, in about 15 to 20 percent concentration, but in the off-the-counter version, they can only go up to 10 percent of azelaic acid. So for products that contain azelaic acid as a main ingredient, I really like the ordinary 10 percent azelaic acid suspension. Okay, so this product contains about 10 percent of azelaic acid, and it is in a thicker and creamier consistency. So I did experience some brightening and uh, acne fighting benefits with this as well. There's also the azelaic acid derivative. I won't pronounce it because it's very long, but I'll put the words here. Okay, so it's also known as PAD. This is a water-soluble derivative of azelaic acid. It is much lighter on the skin and uh, it's much more lightweight as well. So products I have tried that contains PAD as an active ingredient are Naturium's Azelaic Acid Topical 10% and also the Geek & Gorgeous APAD 20%. So these two products also contain azelaic acid but as a derivative in the form of PAD. Uh, they also help to calm down any redness and they fight acne and they do have brightening effects as well. Although I will say that azelaic acid takes a lot longer to produce results as compared to retinoid acid. So for me, I only saw results after about six months of use. So regarding the brightening effects, do note that I also use this together with other brightening ingredients like niacinamide, alpha arbutin, tranexamic acid, and vitamin C. So now how to layer your treatments like your retinoids and your azelaic acid? For me, I would say um, if you get a prescription from a doctor, follow your doctor's instructions. And how I used it in the past was uh, I applied my skincare routine up to the moisturizer stage and then waited for the moisturizer to dry down and then I applied my retinoid or I applied my azelaic acid. So this helps to prevent any kind of irritation on my skin. And for the azelaic acid derivatives, I use them as serums because they come in a serum format and uh, that was in the serum stage of my skincare routine. So now moving on from prescription skincare, I will go on to talk about serums. Serums are also highly effective uh, skincare products that you can add to your skincare routine and most of them usually contain high amounts of active ingredients that can deeply penetrate into your skin and give you its benefits. So there are many serums out there that target different skincare concerns. So there's uh, serums that are for brightening, and some are for anti-aging, some are for acne fighting, and some are for hydration, and some are just there to give you antioxidant support or improve your skin barrier function. So there are also serums that contain multiple active ingredients to give you multiple benefits as well. So I will introduce some of my favorite serums that I have used and tried and loved a lot. Uh, there are also some serums that I haven't tried yet, but I've heard excellent reviews about and I will just introduce them to you as well because they're on my to try list. So first we have the Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% Solution. So this is a BHA and it helps with clearing out excess sebum from your pores and it does help with fighting acne and congested pores as well. Okay. Next is a product that I have already used up and recycled, so I don't have the bottle with me. It is the Crave Beauty Great Barrier Relief. This serum contains a lot of ingredients that are good for skin barrier support, like tamano oil, safflower oil, rosehip oil, niacinamide, ceramides, and folane, and also glycerin and sodium hyaluronate. 
So for me, this helped to relieve my skin of any kind of sensitivity or um, when my skin is feeling raw from using too many skincare products at one go. I find that this is great for people who have dry skin uh, because it tends to have this rich and nourishing texture. But if you don't have dry skin, like if you have oily skin, it is great if your skin is feeling very sensitive or when you work in a very dry type of environment, like if you spend a lot of time in air-conditioned environments. Next is the Purito Unscented Centella Serum. So this is also very good for skin barrier support, but I would say that this is the oily skin friendly alternative. The active ingredients in this are 2% niacinamide, 49% of Centella Asiatica extract. There's also ceramides and peptides. This helps to hydrate, nourish and replenish your skin's moisture. And at the same time, it does contain some antioxidants to help fight off free radicals in your skin. So for me, this was very soothing and calming and great for my oily, acne-prone skin. But at the same time, it is also suitable for those who have dry and combination skin types. This is extremely lightweight and hydrating. So next is the Ordinary Alpha Arbutin 2% with Hyaluronic Acid. So the active ingredients in this are 2% of Alpha Arbutin and Hyaluronic Acid. So this product helps with hyperpigmentation, it helps with brightening, uh, although I say you would need to use it very consistently for a while before you start to see results. Next is the Tiam Vita B3 Source. This contains 10% of niacinamide and 2% beta arbutin. So this does help with a lot of brightening and it also helps with oil control and skin barrier functioning support uh, and it felt very lightweight on my skin. Next is the Ordinary Niacinamide 10% with Zinc PCA 1%. As mentioned, this product contains 10% of niacinamide and 2% of Zinc PCA. So for this, I found it to be the most affordable niacinamide serum out there in the market. It helps a lot with oil control and it does help to calm down my skin after a breakout. And for me, I saw a lot of reduction in redness on my skin when I used this. Okay. However, I would say that The Ordinary does advise its customers not to use this serum together with any vitamin C products. Next is the Bywish Trend 15% Vitamin C with Ferulic Acid. So the actives in this are 15% of vitamin C in the form of L-ascorbic acid with 0.5% of ferulic acid. It also contains some niacinamide and vitamin E as well. So this helps with brightening and collagen stimulation. It is also a powerful antioxidant. So I've only started using this for a few weeks now and I really like it so far. So I will give you an update on how well it works on my skin, maybe in future videos. The next product is something on my to try list. It is the Geek and Gorgeous Sea Glow. So this is very similar to the Wish Trend product. It is a vitamin C serum containing 15% of L-ascorbic acid and some ferulic acid as well. So it helps with brightening, collagen stimulation, and it's also a powerful antioxidant. So now where do you add a serum into your routine? I would say honestly, it is fine to put it anywhere between your cleanser and moisturizer. But typically for me, I like to apply it after using a hydrating toner. And uh, if you're asking about how many serums you can layer, I would say up to a maximum of three serums because there's only so much that your skin can actually absorb. And if you start getting irritated, cut back on the amount of skincare products you use and just stick to a basic routine. So now we are moving on to toners. Now, there are many toners out there and I would say that they are mostly just nice to add into your skincare routine. Today, I'll just go through two types of toners that I like to add to my skincare routine. So the first one is an exfoliating toners. So exfoliating toners can contain a few acids like AHA or PHA to gently exfoliate the top surface of your skin or sometimes they contain BHA to go deeper into your pores to clear out excess sebum and to fight acne. So typically exfoliating toners tend to have lower percentages of these active ingredients as compared to other types of leave-on acids like serums or creams. So here are some of my favorite exfoliating toners. The first one is the Purito ABP Triple Synergy Liquid. So this one contains an AHA, a PHA, and a BHA. And it's formulated in a very gentle way such that you can 
use it very often, like maybe every other night. This helps to exfoliate my dead skin cells off the surface of my skin and also clear out any congested pores. Next is the Crave Beauty Kale Lalu Yaha Toner. I'm not sure how you pronounce this, but if you know how to pronounce it, leave a comment below. So for this, it contains 5.25% of AHA in the form of glycolic acid. And glycolic acid is known to be the gold standard of AHA. So at the same time, this contains a little bit of uh, betaine salicylate, which is a BHA. And at the same time, it has many antioxidants to help the skin fight off any free radicals. So for me, this was very gentle on my skin. It helped to exfoliate my dead skin cells without causing much irritation or any burning or stinging sensation. So when to use exfoliating toners? For me, I would use this immediately after cleansing. You can choose to put it directly on your palm and pat it all over your face, avoiding the eye area, or you can use it on a cotton pad if you like to do that. I would say you can use this up to a maximum of three times a week or depending on how your skin feels, and use it at night to avoid causing any sensitivity to the sun. So the second type of toners I like is hydrating toners. So these help to rehydrate the skin after cleansing and after showering. And it also helps to boost other skincare products that you apply afterwards. When your skin is hydrated, it tends to absorb products more easily. Some of my favorites belong to the Hada Labo range of hydrating toners. They also come with refill packs, which are much more affordable to repurchase rather than buying a whole bottle all over again. The first one is the original Hada Labo Hydrating Lotion. This contains uh, three types of hyaluronic acid and is just a simple basic hydrating toner that contains uh, no fragrance, no alcohol, and no irritants. So the next one is the Hada Labo Premium Hydrating Lotion. This contains five types of hyaluronic acid, but I think the newer reformulated version has seven types of hyaluronic acid. So this is a lot richer on the skin and it feels much more hydrating and I find that the hydration lasts for a lot longer compared to the original one. And next is the Hada Labo Premium Whitening Lotion. Now whitening here refers to brightening and helping with hyperpigmentation. So uh, this contains three types of hyaluronic acid, tranexamic acid, and a form of vitamin C. So this was on top of being hydrating, it was also brightening and it helped to calm down any kind of redness on my skin. So the next one is a product that is on my to try list and I've heard excellent reviews about it. So this one is the Isn't Tree Green Tea Fresh Toner. This contains 80% of green tea extract, hyaluronic acid and centella asiatica. So a lot of reviews out there says that it is extremely hydrating, it is also brightening and uh, it's soothing and calming as well. So when to use hydrating toners? Use it after cleansing. Unless you're using one of those exfoliating toners, then I would say use your exfoliating toner first, then your hydrating toner. So next we have essences. Now essences are really one of those products that are just nice to use in your skincare routine if you have the time and money for that. So there are two types of essences. One of them is what a lot of skincare companies would call a first essence, or rather it's more of a fermented ingredient type of essence. So these tend to have a high percentage of fermented ingredients and they have a light, runny, watery texture and they also help to uh, boost the effectiveness of other skincare products that you use afterwards. So the next type of essence is more of a hydrating and rich type of essence that contain active ingredients as well. So this type of essence would be thicker in texture and it's somewhat between a toner and a serum. So sometimes this type of essence, the hydrating type of essence, will have uh, multiple actives that help with firming the skin, hydration, brightening, and maybe even anti-aging. So for first essences or fermented essences, here are some of my favorites. So the first one is the very famous SK2 Facial Treatment Essence. Now, I know this is very expensive, but for me, I find that it really does help to refine my pores, brighten my skin, and give me that radiant, lit from within type of skin. It is great to use if you have the money to spare. It's the only luxury skincare item that I have been using for many years and that I have repurchased multiple times. The active ingredient is mainly 90% of Galactomyces ferment filtrate, which is what SK2 has patented and branded as Pitera. 
The next one is the Misha Time Revolution First Treatment Essence. This has very similar benefits to SK2 and uh, for me, out of all the other fermented essences that I've tried out there, this is the closest alternative to SK2 and it is much more affordable as well. Okay, so the active ingredients are Saccharomyces ferment filtrate, Bifida ferment lysate, also niacinamide and adenosine. I found that this helped to rehydrate my skin after showering and it also does boost the effectiveness of other skincare products that I use afterwards. So when to use fermented essences? Use it immediately after cleansing and apply this to damp skin with your palms. Yeah, I would say pat this all over your face. You can also use it around your eye area. Okay, so now moving on to hydrating essences. One of my favorite hydrating essences is the CauseRx Advanced Snail Dual Essence. This contains 74.3% of snail mucin and also 5% niacinamide. So I haven't tried this yet, but many reviews have said that it helps to fade hyperpigmentation and it also helps to hydrate the skin and protect the skin barrier. So next is the older version of this. This is the CauseRx Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. So this older version contains 96% of snail secretion filtrate and it's very similar except that it doesn't really have that much of a brightening effect compared to the dual essence. However, I would say it is much more hydrating and it helps to calm and soothe the skin as well. Next is the I'm From Mugwort Essence. So this contains 100% mugwort extract. It helps to soothe and calm irritated skin. Last but not least, we have the miscellaneous items. So these include eye creams, clay masks, and sheet masks. So I call them miscellaneous because they are really just nice to have in your skincare routine and they don't offer that much benefits compared to other products that I have mentioned already. Even if they do offer some benefits, uh, sometimes it's just instantaneous. It isn't so helpful in the long term. But if you just feel like treating yourself or feeling nice, you can add them into your routine. So first, we have eye creams. Now, depending on why you want to use eye creams, you might just be better off with using a moisturizer on your eye area. Most eye creams tend to be moisturizers packed in tiny containers sold at an exorbitant price point. And it's a marketing trick that a lot of skincare companies do to sell you more products. However, I would say that if you want to use eye creams that help to diminish fine lines and at the same time plump up and brighten your eye area, definitely try a retinol eye cream. So retinol eye creams are good to use because most of the time, retinols or retinoic acid types of products that are formulated for your face are too strong or too potent to use around your eyes and can cause a lot of irritation because the skin around your eye area tends to be a lot more delicate and thin. So using a retinol product that is formulated for the eyes, like a retinol eye cream, can be beneficial and helpful in improving the appearance of your eye area. So here are some of my favorite retinol eye creams. The first one is the Inky List Retinol Eye Cream. So this product contains retinol and shea butter. For me, I found that it helped to reduce my fine lines, it brightened my under eye area, it reduced the appearance of any kind of puffiness as well. And I also noticed some firming and plumping of the skin around my eye area. I had to use this very consistently for about 4 months and for me, I use this every single night. And only after using it every single night for about 4 months, I started to see the effects. It is also one of the most affordable retinol eye creams out there in the market. Next is the First Aid Beauty Retinol Eye Cream. This one is a lot more expensive than the Inky List Retinol Eye Cream. But at the same time, it contains many beneficial active ingredients like ceramides, peptides, of course retinol and shea butter. And at the same time, it contains magnesium asorbyl phosphate, which is a vitamin C derivative. This definitely helps with dark circles, puffiness, dry skin around the eye area, and it definitely helps with reducing the appearance of fine lines as well. So if you like to use a rich and nourishing eye cream that plumps up the eye area or helps to moisturize the skin around your eyes, I recommend an eye cream that contains peptides as active ingredients. Though in this case, I would say that it is a lot more cost effective for you to purchase a peptide moisturizer and use it around your eyes as well. However, if you just want to treat yourself to a peptide eye cream, here are some of my favorites. 
The first one is the CauseRx Advanced Snail Peptide Eye Cream. This contains 72% of snail secretion filtrate, 5 types of peptides, and niacinamide. So this was very lightweight and hydrating and moisturizing at the same time. I also saw some brightening effects and at the same time, it helps to instantly plump up my skin around the eye area. I would also say that it is pretty affordable for an eye cream, so that's why I really like this one. The next one is the Claire's Fundamental Nourishing Eye Butter. This contains sunflower seed oil and four types of peptides. It also has caffeine and green tea. So this one is hydrating, plumping, and brightening. Okay, so when to use an eye cream, use it before a moisturizer. Apply a tiny amount to the tip of your fourth finger and gently pat it around your eye area. Okay, so next we have clay masks. Now, clay masks are instantly gratifying for those who have oily, congested skin. They help to suck out all the dirt and grime and excess sebum from your pores and give you that clean skin feeling. Although I would say the results are temporary, and if you want to see longer term benefits, it is better to just use a BHA treatment instead. However, sometimes I do like the instant gratification that clay masks give to me, especially if it's just before a special event. So from time to time, if I do have time to spare, I will just treat myself to a clay mask. And here are some of my favorites. So I don't have them with me now because I've already finished using them and recycled them. So the first one is the Isn't Tree Mugwort Clay Mask. This contains cowden clay, bentonite clay, mugwort powder, and green tea. This product is not so drying for a clay mask. At the same time, it helps to clear out excess sebum and it soothes and calms the skin as well. So the next one is the Inky List Cowden Clay Mask. So this contains cowden clay and smectite clay. It also has aloe leaf juice to balance out the drying effects of the clay. For me, this helps to clear out the excess sebum from my pores and at the same time, it's not too drying as well. When to use a clay mask, use it maximum once a week after cleansing. Follow the instructions on the packaging. Do not leave it on your skin for too long. So lastly, we have sheet masks. Now, I would say sheet masks are essentially face-shaped sheets that are soaked in essences and serums. And many sheet masks from K-beauty brands and many Japanese brands tend to have alcohol and fragrance. If you do have sensitive skin or you are sensitive to fragrance and essential oils, definitely read the ingredients before purchasing these. So now I don't buy sheet masks anymore because I find them a bit wasteful since they are a use once and throw away type of product. However, I would say that they do offer excellent hydration benefits because when you put a sheet mask on your face, it traps your, the hydration between the sheet mask and your skin such that it forces the hydrating ingredients to go into your skin rather than evaporate into the air. Sheet masks tend to be deeply hydrating as I've mentioned and some of them contain active ingredients. However, in order to benefit from the active ingredients in sheet masks, you have to use them very consistently over a long period of time. And this can be very time consuming and expensive at the same time. So if you do have the time and money to spare and you want to treat yourself, here are some recommendations. I won't go through it too much in details. I'll introduce the products and you will see them on the screen. If you want to read through it, you can press pause and read through all the different ingredients that these masks have. So the first one is the Hada Labo Super Hyaluronic Acid Sheet Mask. Next is the Claire's Rich Moist Soothing Tensile Sheet Mask. And there's also any of the Lululun sheet masks. Most of them are free of fragrance and alcohol. Then there's the I'm From Mugwort Sheet Mask, the Benton Snail Bee High Content Mask Pack, and By Wish Trend Natural Vitamin C 21.5 Enhancing Sheet Mask. So when to use sheet mask? Uh, you can use the sheet mask after cleansing before a moisturizer. And these are essentially essences or serums. So you can use it in your essence or serum stage of your skincare routine. So now, after such a long video, we have finally come to the end. And I have covered many types of additional skincare items or steps you can add to your skincare routine. So I know it can be pretty overwhelming and confusing. So I have done up a skincare order chart. It will help you to visualize how to layer these steps and add them into your basic skincare routine if you want to. So the basic steps are in bold and the additional steps are in normal font. So first is the oil cleanser or micellar water to use in the evening, followed by your gentle cleanser, 
and then your clay mask, your exfoliating toner, your first essence or fermented essence, hydrating toner, followed by hydrating essence, then sheet mask, serums, eye cream, moisturizer, retinoids or azelaic acid, and last but not least, if you're doing your skincare in the morning, you definitely have to finish off with a sunscreen. So you definitely don't have to use all of the skincare products. I don't use all of them, but you can just feel free to add them in if you like. So as I mentioned, they are not entirely essential, unlike the basic steps of skincare routine. However, some of them can offer some benefits that you might want to add. And if you would like to see me demonstrate how I do my skincare routine, you have to like the video and subscribe first. If you'd like to see me explain more on individual skincare actives and make videos on that, stay tuned for more and subscribe. And that's the end of this video. I'll see you next time. Bye!